Pathfinding. Creating a nav mesh. Restricting the movement of a player's avatar so it's constrained to the environment is a common problem for many 3D games. So far we've approached this using proxy meshes, simplified versions of the environment, and then used ray casting in the direction of the avatar's motion to determine if a player can move forward or backward based on the intersection distance. In this video we're going to look at a different technique using navigation meshes or nav meshes for short. Whatever technique you use involves creating geometry. Here's a simple example. Clicking anywhere in the grey area creates a path from the current position to the click position. The benefit of this approach is you can easily create paths that NPC characters can move along, like this. The technique involves a number of stages. One, create a mesh commonly called a nav mesh. Two, export this as an asset. Three, traverse the child objects of the asset to find the nav mesh. Four, pass this object to a pathfinding library to create a database of paths from triangle to triangle. Five, generate a new path as the user clicks the mesh. Six, in the render loop, update the player position to move it along the calculated path. Before we start writing any code, you'll need to create the nav mesh. A nav mesh defines the legal areas that an avatar can be positioned. Of course, it's possible to manually create this geometry, but it's much easier to use a tool that can create the mesh based on the geometry of an environment. It used to be possible to create a nav mesh using Blender, but with Blender 2.8 and above, the game library included with Blender up to 2.79b has been removed. Instead, to create the nav mesh, we'll use Unity. There are loads of tutorials about using Unity, but all we're going to look at in this video is creating and exporting a nav mesh. If you haven't got a copy of Unity, now's the time to download and install it. The program's free to download and use as long as you earn less than $100,000 related to its use. To work along with this video, download the resources pathfinding.zip, unzip it, then use Unity Hub to add the project Create Nav Mesh, which you'll find in the Unity folder. Open the project and use the project window to navigate to the scene navmesh.unity. Open the scene Notice it contains a single model, hex tile. If we expand it, you'll see it contains multiple objects. Now we need to open Blender. If you don't yet have a copy of Blender, shoot over to this address and download a copy. Again, it's free. Unity and Blender are great tools when developing 3GS assets. In Blender, I created a very simple scene, the bits for which I got from BitGem 3D. I exported the Blender scene as an FBX file into the Models folder in the Unity project. You can simply save the Blender scene in the Unity Assets folder and Unity natively supports reading and parsing the content. Now back in Unity, open the window AI Navigation. This opens a panel with four tabs. Let's take them one at a time. First the Agent. In Unity, you can use a nav mesh agent to control an avatar. For our purposes, we're only interested in the mesh created. The control is going to be via 3GS, so we can ignore this tab. The next tab is Areas. This defines the different area types, and we can leave this at the default. Before we look at the Bake tab, let's skip to the Object tab. In this example, I have made all the objects in the hex tile navigation static. That means they're going to be considered when baking the nav mesh. All the meshes are non-walkable except for the island mesh. Your project might need a different setup. Now make sure you're looking at the scene window and select the bake tab. Here you set the radius of the player avatar, the agent radius. This controls the gap between an obstruction and the edge of the nav mesh. If there are slopes, you can limit how steep a slope can be and the height of a step, then press Bake. 
you can see the mesh that is generated as long as you're in the scene view. Once you're happy with the result, we're ready to export it. This project contains a custom editor script that has the menu item Custom Export Nav Mesh OBJ. Select this and a new OBJ file will be created at the root of the Assets folder. Now back to Blender and use Import OBJ to import this object into the scene. Unfortunately, because Blender uses a different coordinate system to Unity, you'll find that the x-axis is flipped. This is easily fixed. Press 7 to get an overhead view. Then press Tab to switch between Object Mode and Edit Mode. Make sure that just the nav mesh is selected before doing this. Then press S for Scale and X for the x-axis and then enter minus 1. The object is instantly flipped in the x-axis. Press G and drag with the mouse to tweak the positioning. But you'll find then that if you press the backface culling checkbox in the material properties panel that all the triangles are facing away, actually facing down. We need to flip them using Mesh Normals Flip. You must be in edit mode to do this. You now have a nav mesh. Export it as a GLB file. For the export settings I use Format Binary. Include, leave the checkboxes empty to include everything. Transform, Y up should be checked. Geometry, UVs, normals, vertex, colours and materials. And set images to JPEG format. If you use compression you'll need to use the Draco loader. If you're unfamiliar with that then leave it unchecked. Animation, all unchecked except Use Current Frame, which should be checked. Give the export a name and folder and press the Export GLTF 2.0 button. Now use the Online GLTF Viewer to check your file. That covers using Unity and Blender to create a nav mesh. In the next video we'll look at using this to control the motion of our avatar. Catch you in a minute.